Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about custom attributes. A custom attribute is in essence something that you add to a tag that is, it's your own type of attribute and the browser will not do anything in particular. It's just a way for you to store some configuration or data on a element. So. An example of this would be what's happening here. So the way that the syntax works is that you declare a custom attribute by doing data dash name, whatever you want it to be. And then you can set that to a value if you want. Now you might ask, why would I do this? What purpose could I use a custom attribute for? And there's a few that come to mind for us who've been doing this for a while. So one thing you could do is if you, let's say that you're not using some type of fancy JavaScript framework and let's say that you, your JavaScript needs to know something about the element, let's say that there's a piece of data or whatever, you can actually render that on the server and put it in that custom attribute so that your JavaScript can safely access that. That's one thing you could do. And my two favorite examples of using custom attributes is I'm going to show you these and if you I, I hope you take this to heart because I've done enough development for some fairly large companies where we have had to support certain features that are extremely difficult to get right and I'm not saying that this is the only way to solve these problems but this has worked really nice at very large scale so I hope you I hope you you're paying attention so one thing that you may have to support is theming and theming is the idea that your customers or your users or so forth that they can declare their own colors fonts like all that stuff through by using CSS right and they want to be able to, in essence, make the site like certain aspects of the site look and feel the way that they want, which is a horrible, horrible, horrible idea, and nobody should ever do it. But unfortunately, people don't listen to us developers who have to support this, so they still do. Now, the way that some people do this is that they have like, there's several techniques and I'm going to show you my favorite one which I argue is probably the one that has been working out the best it's very easy to maintain over a long period of time and it's very powerful S and it also illustrates very nicely the first thing I was saying about how you how you should interact with javascript when you're using custom elements sorry custom attributes now what some people will do is that let's say that they have a piece of JavaScript and they want to, as I said, they want to be able to identify some element on the page. Let's say that you have a slider, a sliding menu, a hamburger menu on the mobile device or something like that. Then usually what they do is that they put an ID and then they hook into that ID. They do something like, like in JavaScript land, they do document dot query selector ID something something to get the element. And I, I respectfully say don't do that don't do that ever 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 if you can avoid it don't do it because the problem with using ID and class names and that type of stuff that people have been doing in the past is that these things have a semantic meaning to CSS so that means that if let's say that you want to refactor your code and you want to change some of your class names or your IDs for some reason when you're working on the CSS all of a sudden you have to go remember that the JavaScript depends on these names and that's really dangerous because when you work on a really large code base there is no way you're going to remember all the stuff that you wrote so if you want to long-term support something it is crucial that you make it as isolated as possible and that's why I think custom, custom attributes are so powerful because you can they scale very well. If you have a custom attribute that you hook into, you know, and the person, might, maybe you have colleagues, they know that if they change that, 
or like if they want to change it it's very easy for them to search for that custom attribute it's going to be most of often it's going to be unique because there's very there's a slim chance that somebody has created two custom attributes of the same type and so forth and you can create conventions around this so custom attributes have very rarely have a semantic meaning somewhere else so you're 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 pretty safe when you use them so I'll give you a example of exactly what I'm talking about so here we're gonna do a little bit of CSS and JavaScript I know that this is an HTML course but I think that this is an important lesson to be learned so I have my div here and I've added two custom attributes data theme and I set that equal to color and then data dash js and then I have some value called add text. Underneath I have two buttons foo and bar and I have two on click functions so change theme to foo and change, change theme to bar when I click these. Now my JavaScript as you can see here is going to query select on data js add text and it's going to set the contents to hello world at runtime. Now this as I said this is safe this is now very clearly communicating to a you know if I had a colleague who was working on this project with me he or she could immediately see that oh okay he's the, like this this element has some type of meaning to some JavaScript that is on the page because let's say that you have a really big project and this file is somewhere in the file system then they can very easily see oh okay it's it's I can't just remove this because there's a dependency this this uh, JavaScript is depending on the fact that this element is there and it's uh, it's going to try and find it's JavaScript is gonna do something with this element so if they see this code in the JavaScript they're gonna realize that there's something on the page that has this us attribute and if they go into the HTML and they want to refactor that they can immediately see oh this element isn't safe to remove because there's some or rather I have to be extra careful here because it looks like there's something that's depending on this and this is as I said if it was an ID or a class or something and they were refactoring the CSS it would be very easy for them to not know that there's some JavaScript as well that is depending on this right okay let's move on so here are my two functions so what I'm doing here is that I'm going to the body and then I'm toggling the class foo and bar depending on which one is called on and off on the body element and you might ask why are, am I doing that because and the, what I'm doing this for is because I'm using a theme or I, I, I'm supporting a theming function on this website or this page right and the way that I like to do this is that I like to set a global like a custom attribute system where you use theme and you set it to color or something you give it some value and then you say that okay so if the if the how do I say this in a nice way so if the if the thing that is on top like if foo the foo class is over like it's the parent of your el of the el an element that has this attribute selector here then set the color to blue like this theme co attribute just denotes okay I want to set the color to whatever the theme foo is and this is saying basically if you have a parent of bar then set the color to you know to red instead and you this might look, sound a little bit weird but what the powerful part about this is that what this allows you to do is to say that you you basically can now use JavaScript and set the class foo or bar on the body element and as every single element that uses this custom data theme equal to color is going to get this color just immediately you don't have to like hard code and like go to each specific element it becomes very very easy for you to to style an entire website now if I go to my page and I click foo you see that the text goes blue let's take a look at what's actually happening as you can see now the body got the class of foo and because the selector is saying alright if my parent is foo and I have the theme equal to color custom attribute then I want whoever has that 
to set the color to blue. This is very powerful. I can do bar and now I have full bar which means that the bar is going to win because of specificity so I can remove the foo of course and I can remove the bar and just completely disable the theme and I can just apply a bar. Now this system of working will make it very easy for you to support theming so this is what this is just one scenario for what you can use custom attributes for but I would say that it's by far the most useful I've found so I hope this is useful as a, uh, again like Try to remember this because if you ever get, like, trust me, there are a lot of people who like this idea of theming, and very few developers know how to do it right. And I'm not saying that this is the best way, but I can say that it has been working for me and for some really large companies. So, hope you enjoy it.